the focus on Christ is really here as a result, I think, of Awana. It's been really the lifeblood of this church. Awana saved this church. It turned it. We started growing and it uh, turned everything around. My dad was the new part-time pastor for the church. It was in October of 1962. There were about 22 to 25 people sitting in this room uh, that morning. I noticed there weren't too many kids. Jimmy Raymond was there. It was a slowly uh, contracting church. There were a lot of grandmothers and little kids like me, you know, that came to church here. And uh, uh, there was talk at that time of this church combining with the Congregational Church in, in Edgerton into one church just because the congregation was getting smaller. And they hired a young guy from uh, Chicago uh, by the name of Merlin Billhorn. And uh, he came up here, brought his kids, and he brought the Awana program with him. And uh, it, uh, it was fun. We got started in January of 1963, and it's been going strong ever since. When we started Awana Club when I was a kid, we started in third grade, third grade through high school. Today we have Awana Clubs uh, for kindergarten, first and second graders. They're called Sparks, and we have the Cubbies who are three and four year olds. And this last year or two, we've even had a club called Puggles. And I don't know what age that is, but they're really small. It's really adorable. So that's for two and three year olds and they sing and they play with Play-Doh and sometimes eat it. We've got kids from age three all the way up through high school that are here uh, doing all kinds of activities. Uh, there's adults that, that are here that want to be here and, and be with these kids and help them and, and, and hopefully be examples. I was a, an Awana leader before I probably should have been. It was learning to be a leader that I became a Christian. I had no idea that my sins were already paid for until I took leadership training. It's a program that draws families in. We've seen lives of families be impacted, um, starting with the kids in Awana. My husband came to know Jesus Christ and was saved through doing verses with my, my now oldest son. There's just something about the tenderness of a child and being with them, and God used those words and those scriptures and those stories to draw him in. My family came to know Jesus Christ because of Awana and because of Fulton Church. Some of them came because grandkids are coming to Awana. Game time is the thing that draws the kids uh, to Awana. But the thing that I'm most impressed with is the layout of the materials where the kids memorize verses. And they don't just memorize verses, but they memorize them as answers to questions. That translated into their academics. We could see that pretty quickly. When they had to memorize something in school or learn something or remember something, it came a lot easier because they had already, unbeknownst to them perhaps, they already learned how to, how to uh, focus and how to learn uh, things. I've been a leader in Awana most all the time that my children attend. I like to come when they come. Activities vary, but there's generally uh, music and activities and Bible reading, and depending on your level, what there is, but songs and games and very fun things. It recognizes that kids need an activity, that it needs to be fun, it needs to be social, it needs to be more than just sitting down and rote memorization. And while that's there, and they make that piece uh, uh, fun and entertaining, there's a game period, there's, there's things that attract kids and their friends uh, to Awana. And I noticed at Fulton Church, they had um, families and children from all over in the community and even neighboring cities, so it wasn't even just exclusively Fulton Church members. My wife Peggy always uh, made a 
tour around the neighborhood picking up kids to go to Iwana on Sunday nights and uh, she'd end up with 13 or 14 kids in a car and uh, that's back before the days of seat belts. So. Fulton Church isn't really on the way to a lot of places so they specifically come for Iwana and um, get involved in the programs and the various activities that we do here in all the age levels. Uh, Awana has been um, a, a real draw for many families. As, as I've been an Awana leader for 35 years, I've seen families come first because their children come to Awana, and then you'll see the parents slowly drawn in, and then they just become a part of the fellowship. It also draws children, I think, into becoming more involved. It's not just another sports group or another youth group, but it's somewhere they can come where I think they feel truly heard and attended to and special and can be sort of crazy and wild, but really serious sometimes too. Well, when I think of the earliest memories of my of uh, Awana here at Fulton, I, it cannot go without uh, being said that uh, I belong to the national championship team. And I have props. Uh, just to show you, I have brought along uh, the trophy that we won back in 1964, uh, long ago. Uh, but that is the, uh, the it, uh, when I try to think of memories of Awana, that's what I think of. There was only one Olympics back then, now there are hundreds of them across the country. I think you could have 16 boys on your team, and I think that was all of the boys that we had. Uh, it came down to uh, the last race with the uh, best of our best against the best of another team. And the other team won the race. We came in second, but we won the war. We had the most points when it was all over and we were the national champions. And that is, uh, without a doubt, the earliest and best memory that I have of uh, Hawaii. And it was quite a surprise. And I'll tell you, it really did uh, inspire moms and dads and clubbers and leaders to really get going in Awana clubs here. I was the uh, boys club uh, leader for, I'm gonna guess it was six or seven years. And uh, uh, I just think of the fun times that you've had with that. Because you're working with younger kids and they're your kids, but they're kids that you've seen grown, growing up in the church. And uh, it was just fun working with them. You know, when we were in boys club, that group of boys club leader was the best group of guys you could have as an example. Uh, Wes Millar, and Mark Matthews, Bob Millar, uh, Jim Raymond, regular guys, fun guys who wanted to be here. You could play football with them, you could throw dirty socks at each other and, and be nasty and gross, um, but you could also sit down and pray with them. And, uh, and, and they were here because they wanted to, uh, they wanted to share Christ with you. And uh, even if it was on a day where you didn't sit down and do anything serious, um, you know, they were still setting an example. You know, that'd be the, the ideal is to, that someone would think of me that way 20 years from now. Our kids understand that their leaders care about them and that we have great numbers as far as leaders to, to uh, clubber ratio. And, and so that just makes our club, you know, that much more special, I think. And that would be my desire in the next 50 years, that, that we'd be sitting here and, and we'd have a, a, a large group that we could say, look, look who's been impacted uh, even more than what we've seen already and, and are pleased with. Yeah. And the strongest bonds I have have really come through uh, my relationships in Fulton Awana. And so for me, it, it's just a natural part of my life. Um, I hope I'm doing it as long as some of the leaders that I've seen. I can think of numerous people who uh, I had in Awana clubs as a, as a friend. We grew up together, uh, Jimmy Raymond, for instance, uh, and I were in Awana clubs together. Bill Berchie, um was in Awana clubs with Wes Millar, was in Awana clubs with me. Uh, these are men in our, that are still in our church today that have children and grandchildren that will be involved in Awana clubs today. Uh, so we have the very great fortune uh, in this church of having uh, what I'll call generational people. Leaders like Roy Nelson and Dick Towns and, and uh, Ruth Towns and uh, Marion Luxinger and people that uh, dedicated their life uh, at that moment 
to preserving this church, to making Awana fun and making it good for kids. And uh, Awana saved this church. It turned it. I think it's very important to keep the program going because we need things that have a positive influence on, on our kids. The last 50 years, it's really grown and worldwide and even within the United States. I'd really love to see it stay connected and um, continue on for the growth of our children. I think it's, in my opinion, one of the only programs that really touches spiritually for children and brings them to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as their personal savior in a safe and very fun environment. So it's heart's in the right place. It's core is there. It's this uh, good uh, Christian biblical teaching that's there. But beyond that, it recognizes that in order to attract kids into it, it needs to be fun. And our kids would not be where they are today if it weren't for that influence. I'm very appreciative for Fulton Awana and, and what it means to my family, what it means to my kids, and what I think it'll mean to their kids too. Thank you.